So in a yesterday's class, uh, we had looked into uh, parallel in uh, serial out configuration, right? And uh, we had to look into the waveforms, right? So this was a circuitry which we actually dealt with. Yes, so any doubts with this uh, concept up till here or any doubts in this circuitry? No, sir. Fine. So as you all can observe here, uh, these do not have connected uh, outputs. So when I say connected, which means they are just separate. Okay. There is no way that uh, these outputs are passing to the next flip flop. No. Okay. It's not connected. So these outputs are just brought out. Okay. And that's how we are able to achieve the parallel out configuration. Fine. Okay. So moving on, now you can just look at the uh, waveform okay, in order to have more clarity. So this is the <coughs> uh, diagram where you have inputs uh, D0, D1, D2, D3, and outputs Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. Then uh, you have clock, clear, SH is nothing but shift, LD bar is nothing but load. So a lower value will actually load the values, then a higher value will actually shift the values. Okay. So we are using this kind of configuration here, uh, which is parallel in serial out. But of course here, if you can see, okay, we are not doing any kind of uh, shifting operation. Okay, so there is no relation between this uh, diagram here and the uh, diagram which I have put up here. Okay, so we are using this just like the previous one. If you can recall, which had connections between them. which has connections between them. So we are using the shift load configuration, right? We are not using uh, the uh, parallel in and parallel out configuration, okay? So that diagram actually represents this circuit, right? Okay, so it's called SR. G4. Okay. So when I say SR, which means it's using your SR flip flop. Okay. Remember, we had reversed it. We had reversed it. Right. I will show you that. So it's actually referring to that. Hmm. Yes. We had reversed it. Right. So, so you have different configurations for that based on the number of inputs. Okay. So if I have to use a four bit version, okay. So uh, this will be my parallel data inputs and parallel outputs. So how are we getting this? Um, your inputs are actually zero, okay. But then at this point of time, uh, you have both J and K uh, to be high, right? So when both are high, then it's actually going to complement uh, whatever is in the memory. So in the memory, we had low value. So that is going to be high, okay? Uh, till the next uh, uh, configuration of your JK. So JK, J is now going zero, okay? And this will also go zero. Whatever is happening for Q, not the same thing will be happening for Q1, but at the next cycle, but at the next cycle, okay? But at this point of time, Okay, at this point of time, you can find that your D0 is going high, which means from low value, okay, you are, you are going to a higher value, okay. So, which means this value has to pass to your Q0, okay. So, here you can see the value has come down, okay, which means this is a zero. If it's a zero, means it's a load. Load means whatever value is here for D0, those values D0 d1 d2 and d3 okay so you can see d0 is one let me just write it so here we have zero 
zero means it is referring to load load means it is telling whatever the values are there in d not d1 d2 d3 that one you pass to outputs so here i have one for d not okay for d not and i have one for t2 okay so these values should be exclusively passing to q not and q not d2 d2 right so q2 q not q2 okay because this parallel data input and parallel output you are able to understand right this flow yes the output waveform are you all able to understand yes or no yes sir okay so you should be seeing at this point okay which is nothing but your rising edge okay at your rising edge so it is so it will be valid from here to here okay because only at this point okay only at this point your load is going uh, your load is getting activated so load means whatever values are there in parallel input okay. so those values will be replicating here in your output so as usual then uh, you know it goes high which means it has to uh, shift the value uh, which means uh, whatever values were there previously okay the same values will continue because now j is what j is actually zero so the same thing will come not uh, come out here as q not so those values will just keep shifting so here also it will come high but at a later point of time and then it will go low here also it will come high after q1 then it will go low here also it will come high and then it will go low okay so this is how you have to understand your waveform any doubts here students any doubts please ask yes can i proceed yes sir fine so you have to see here uh, is it in shift mode or is it in load mode okay so in shift mode serial inputs will be activated in load parallel inputs will be activated so accordingly those values will uh, follow and as the clock keeps going the value keeps passing on from one to another okay Now the next uh, interesting register, okay. Um, of course, this is just for your information. It's not for your curriculum. But then I thought, you know, it's uh, it's fine for you to know about bidirectional shift registers. So bidirectional is something where you know I can make my input as output and I can make my output as input. Okay. So here, my data in can be data out, and data out can be data in so data can go either in this fashion from left to right or from right to left okay so in any way um, we have provisions of moving the data now do you think this kind of facility is it really necessary bi-directional facility a bi-directional shift register is it really necessary yes no can be sir it, it is necessary right okay yes sir because we need to have uh, data flowing in and out right so can you give me one example of a bidirectional shift register a real time example or day to day life which we use can you think of something like that Uh, 
so data cables data cables yeah that's also one uh, good example where uh, you know it has to process information to and fro right it's good good it's a good example we can so, even think of pen drives uh, we can think of hard disks right where uh, it is not just one way direction but we need to send and receive information right so good so those are some examples of uh, bidirectional shift resistors okay so it can be shifted either to the left or right okay so this is uh, one such circuit here okay so so now we'll have to analyze this circuit and we'll have to check as to how this is exactly able to move from right to left or left to right okay so we have our serial data coming in through through this terminal okay through this terminal say i have one here okay and then if i want to do a right shift then it should be a high value if i want to do a left shift then it should be a low value so whenever i am doing the shifting operation inverter plays a very important role okay because at one side it gives me one and the other side it gives me zero so i am extracting the value of uh, inverter or the property rather to say property of inverter and i am making use of this operation so let's say we are we have given one here okay i've given one so which means this line will remain active okay let me just put it in blue and you assume that this line is active okay so blue with blue i am i am trying to tell you that it is active okay so now let me put another line okay which actually gives out zero so red suggests that the line is inactive okay so i will have a zero there so now let us try to decode information since i have a zero there my output here for this uh, g6 will be a zero g5 will also be a zero then what about g7 what about g7 what will be the output for g7 Zero, sir. Zero. Okay. Good. Then G eight will also be zero. So which means I have G one, G two, G three, and G four only active, isn't it? And now since these values are one, okay, these values are one here. Here also it's one, one. one so it is waiting for another terminal right it is waiting for this terminal so let's say i am giving a one here so one into one is one so one is coming through one plus zero is one so one gets in and out comes one because it's a d flip flop right so out comes one this one gets in here through g2 one into one is one so one comes out here so which means i have a one here i have a zero here one plus zero is one and the data is now going here and i have a one here so which means one is here zero is here and the same one is coming through and then one one and then q3 is finally having one so is the data moving from left to right or right to left what kind of shift is happening in this case our students so we are see looking at data moving from 
it's having a right shift right it's moving from one flip flop to another flip flop so i think this point all of you are clear isn't it fine now now we have to think of the other way okay the left shift how the left shift operates so is it clear can i erase all of this yes yes sir fine okay now let's go with the other case so we'll take a lower value Here is zero. So this will be high. Right. And uh, the bottom line goes to zero. So if this goes zero, then all the values are going to go. Zero, right? The ones which are connected here. So, which means G one zero, and G two is also zero. C three, G four. Fine. Now I'm waiting for G five, G six, G seven, and G eight values. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so how do I get these values? I will be getting those values through my uh, Q three. Okay. So Q three, if you can see, it is connected here to G seven. Right. Q three is connected to G seven, right? So whatever value is there in Q three, that comes through G seven, and let's let's probably take it as one, okay, as an example. So one will come here, so which means I have a one here and a zero, so I'll be getting a one. And this line is connected here. Okay, so which means, yeah. So which means now next part is it will be here. It will be going to G six. Right from G six, it will come down here. Then from here, it is going to Q one. From Q one. Comes here, and then it gets into G five, right? From G five, it's coming here, and then this value. Okay, so which means I'm going to have my final Q naught. Even if the value goes here, um, any impact going to happen? Any impact going to happen if the value is going to G two? Say, for example, one is coming through here. Now, since this is already not functional zero, any value that goes through, okay, is not going to impact this, right? Because it's already a zero. It's connected to zero. So, which means your data is moving from left, isn't it? The shift is happening. Towards the left, so it's moving this side, and then it's going to G six, and it's going to G five. So using your uh, inverter, we can actually change the way that the data moves either to the left or to the right. Any doubts here, students? Any doubts?
Have you all understood this? Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. So this is how your bidirectional uh, four bit shift register functions. So based on my values which are given here, either right shift or left shift, high value or low value. Uh, accordingly, the right and left uh, shift is going to happen. So whenever it's a high value, okay, the right shift happens. We probably use another color. Yeah, right shift happens whenever it's a zero, then left shift, right, left. Okay, so however we want based on the data, we can either move, move it towards the right side or probably towards the left side based on whatever data that we have given okay so with this you know i wanted to give you all a different perspective of shift register so i hope these concepts were clear this is a, this was another alternative approach which i wanted to you know uh, teach all of you uh, rather than uh, you know having the the conventional type of uh, circuitry so I hope all of you have understood the importance of shift register and how important it is to move data from one point to another point and um, how important it is to represent it first in the form of this block diagram so that it becomes easy for us to uh, understand and represent it in the form of circuitry. One important parameter that you can think of here is the property of inverter. Okay. So this will allow us in selecting one and zero and we can give different lengths to the input and output. So that is one best property of an inverter, right? And then we also looked into a few uh, waveforms as to how these um, load and shift property functions. We also saw through the parallel out configuration and parallel in configuration. Then the registers, uh, you know, the, the general uh, diagram and uh, we also saw through the uh, serial out configuration, the associated waveforms and uh, parallel in serial out uh, shift registers. Okay, so all these configurations we were able to look into. Okay. And uh, the best part here is the uh, RS uh, flip flop, okay, where you are actually uh, getting those uh, terminals inverted. So when it's inverted, uh, it actually acts like a D flip-flop. How many of you uh, actually referred back? I was telling you about uh, you know, the flip-flop conversions. And uh, I mentioned a point that if R and S values are, are reversed, then it is functioning as a D flip-flop. How many of you went back and, and uh, you know, clarified with that point? Did you all look into it? Yes, no. Okay, so just give me a moment while I share that information as well. Okay, just a moment. So this was the information that I was talking to you about when you have to convert your SR flip-flop to D flip-flop then you will be using this property here. Be using this property here, where S will be convert, connecting to D and R will be connecting to D bar. So the same thing, we have used this property in order to convert SR flip-flop to uh, D flip-flop. So the terminals were oppositely connected and it gets converted to a D flip-flop. Okay, fine. So students, any doubts with concepts that we have discussed so far? Okay, so we will see uh, the upcoming uh, topics, okay, probably the ones uh, which you feel a little complex. So we will, we will have a quick review through those in our upcoming lectures.